I'll play the video a little bit more here. The part about Washington, he was the brain behind that whole action. Yes, he was. And the reason that there were not more people clapping their hands right now is because they told him that he could not. So now they're coming in to get me. Do those guys look like they're coming in to have a cup of tea, or do they look like they mean business? So did everybody else around him. So I'm like, only or no, that is not how it's going down this time. <laughs> So around that point, I catch them out of the corner of my eye, and I zoom my lens out because I want as wide a view as possible because I see them coming straight for me. You know, it, it, it's kind of crowded. You know, I can't really try to maneuver away. There was actually a woman with a baby uh, right next to the side of me here, so I wasn't going to try to shove her out of the way to uh, to try to get out of there. Um, so they're making a beeline straight for me, and I happen to catch them out of the corner of my eye, and so that's when I zoom my camera out. So Benjamin Carenza is leading this uh, group of people. They have their anarchist flag sticks with them, which I've personally seen used as weapons to smash out windows. Um, Benjamin Carenza is now starting to encircle me from behind. Will literally weighs twice my size. Get out of here, racist. I'm not a racist. Dude, don't get out of here. Don't put your hands on me. So he starts pushing and shoving me, and you can hear me immediately say, don't put your hands on me, don't put your hands on me. You know, so I start retreating from the scene. I start backing away. Obviously, these guys mean business. They mean trouble. I'm outnumbered. I'm not there to fight or cause me trouble with these people. I'm just there to film. I'm trying to do my job as a video news journalist. So they are now taking steps towards me as I'm trying to back away from the scene. Not only have they intentionally targeted me and encircled me and started to get physically assaultive with me, they are now taking steps towards me as I'm trying to avoid the situation. And you can see now everyone's realized it's a scene. Everyone's starting to look over at what's going on here. Uh, Millsap pants his camera around here in a second. I, uh... So at that point, I'm backing away. They're taking steps towards me. Um, I had flipped my monopod upside down. Uh, monopod is just a single stick that uh, you would have a camera on, almost like a, um, almost like a cane that would have the camera on top, and it's collapsible. You can do it up and down, um, different uh, varying lengths. That's great to have at protests out on the street because your angles are, your uh, your footage is more stable and you can get it up above crowds and you can get it stable if you're um, uh, capturing people speaking and it's maneuverable too, you can easily walk with it. So all, all the street videographers I always encourage to get monopods. <laughs> Thank you Kay. <laughs> so I flipped my monopod upside down to use that as sort of a non-lethal intermediary option here. Uh, in case they're going to hit me with their flag staffs, in case they're going to start punching me or something, I would at least have something at that point. Now, they're still taking steps towards me after I did that, after I uh, gave the verbal commands, as I'm still giving the verbal commands, and as I'm backing away. So at that point, I flipped my jacket open to reveal that I had a gun. Now, I was ready to possibly draw at that point. It would depend on the situation exactly, but I wanted to be ready to be able to draw. Because um, at that point, the threat level has been escalated towards me now that they're taking steps towards me. And please chime in if uh, <laughs> the people who have been through DPSST uh, <laughs> uh, disagree with anything that I'm saying. <laughs> So now it's turning into a bit more of a scene because now after these guys incited the scene and I'm trying to get away and I'm forced to possibly draw my gun at that point, now everybody's screaming and yelling, oh, he's got a gun, he's got a gun. But even knowing that they still converge. Yes, so they're still coming after me. You're going to notice, I might have to back this up a little bit more, you'll notice in this angle here a bunch of people coming off of the ledge. I'll back it up just a little bit. Here. Look at all these people jumping off the ledge to come join into the scene. So it's a very chaotic scene. Very dynamic. People are coming in and out of the scene. People are coming in and out from all different angles. I'm trying to get away from the scene. I don't want to fight. I don't want to become a victim of violence. I don't want to have to go to that next level to defend myself. I will if I have to. I don't want to have to go there, though. 
So you got all these other people getting up in my grill here. You'll notice that Carenza here had separated himself from the crowd. So he gets the crowd all riled up. Then he separates himself from the crowd. So that's Carenza there. That's the bulk of the mob. And then Mike Bivens, another um, street videographer, he had fired up his camera right there. As far as I know, that was when he started it, that there's no footage before that. My angle is the only one that has the initial attack on it. So now, watch this dude. He's shedding his backpack at that point. That sort of escalates your level of fear. Because now, he's shedding some... He's making it easier for him to attack me if he's not weighed down by his backpack. You'll notice I am weighed down by my backpack. I have my computer gear in there. I have other camera gear, spare batteries, water, snacks. Um, anyone that's been through my uh, uh, video training series on street videography, <laughs> which I, I know a couple folks in here have. Is the learning annex next week, is it? Huh? Is the learning annex, is it? <laughs> no, it's on, it's on YouTube. So it's part of my uh, videographer academy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have all that stuff in my backpack, so I'm weighed down by my backpack here. So this other guy is now encircling me from behind. This guy has actually, um, Demetrius, is he still in here? Hi. Me? Oh yeah, there he is. Hi. This is your friend Malcolm Chaddock right here, who tried to start an altercation with Demetrius at an event one time, getting in Demetrius' face, screaming and yelling at him. I have seen him at several things, blocking off traffic illegally. I've seen him here on at PSU when, um, when students have crashed the Board of Trustees meeting. I've seen him getting in the way of PSU employees in the hallways, being asked to leave. He, he claims to be some kind of security guard, is what he claims to be. He's got no DPSST certification. He, he's just an arbitrary thing. So he's now circling around my back. I got all this other stuff going on. Sensory overload at this point, because I, I, you know, um, situational awareness. And so my eyes are constantly scanning the horizontal plane as all of this is going on. Um, so now this guy's coming up behind me here. I got all these people. Now, now I got to deal with this guy. What's this guy all about? He starts walking towards me after encircling me from behind. He's now coming up from my, you know, four or five o'clock position with his arms outstretched towards me. The bulk of the mob is now to my right. <laughs> So, I happen to notice here, and th th this is the almost the decisive moment here. Because my attention is distracted to my right here. And I happen to see Carenza now coming up on what is my blind side, my left side. You know, my attention is distracted here, but because I have a decent sense of awareness, I happen to catch him out of the corner of my eye. At that point, having been through everything that I've been through in this 40 second span, as I'm trying to get away from the altercation, with these people continuing to bear down on me, after I've issued verbal commands, after I've started retreating, after I've tried using a, a non-lethal device, they're still coming after me. He's not coming up on my blind side. A guy who's literally twice my size, now coming up on my blind side. At that point, I had every reason to believe that these guys, in a mob mentality, were just seconds away from smashing me into the pavement, robbing me of my camera gear, robbing me of my computer gear, possibly using my gun against me. No police around to protect me. I'm left to fend for myself at that point. So this was the decisive moment where I feel that I was in danger and that having exercised all of these other options to no avail, I'm left with no choice. Oh, So, whose video is that second one right there? Which one? This one? No, up top. This one? Top middle. Top middle. Top middle. Top Bivens. Bivens. Mike Bivens. Uh, so sort of the activists are familiar with Mike Bivens. Um, he's he's a videographer. He's sort of an Antifa apologist. He'll delete videos that show Antifa committing crimes. Uh, he'll make copyright complaints if you're trying to borrow some of his videos for something else. Um, so he's really sort of a, he, he accidentally becomes a journalist, but it's not intentional. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so that's his angle right there. Um, 
so I'm thankful that everybody stopped and or got back when I drew. You know, I was trained to shoot until the threat has been neutralized. Again, people who have been through um, firearms training, DPSST training, are going to be familiar with that. So in this particular case, the act of me drawing the firearm and leveling it at what I believe to be hostile and threatening subjects was enough to neutralize that threat because they all stopped, they all got back. I did not have to fire any rounds at that point. Having neutralized the threats and everybody safely away from me, the threat is now gone and I reholster, just as I was trained to do. <laughs> So it's, it started to get a little hairier again. People were coming up on me again, but it didn't reach that level of um, 